thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. Good morning, good morning, Pine Hills Community Church. You out there in social media land, we're glad that you're here with us. We love you to be able to worship with us today. Thank you, Lord. And as I always say, there will be something said. There will be something done here today that will bless you. Trust me, you come seeking God, he said you'll find him. And when you hear his voice, he says, don't harden, don't harden your heart. It doesn't mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter who it is. It could be a donkey talking to you. If he says the word of God, he said, don't hurt, don't harden your heart when you hear me. I'm reminded of Psalms 106. The psalmist says something that, oh boy, was keenly aware to me. He realized that his forefathers and his fathers before him, when they were in Egypt, they sinned and that was why they were in Egypt. But God in his mercy, he saw fit to deliver them, take them through the Red Sea, but yet they still, they still turned their backs on God. They forgot what he had done. But then the psalmist said, but God, I remember, I remember, and because I remember, Lord, I see now what you did, Lord. You bestowed your favor upon me when there was nothing to give, Lord. But yet, yet, God, I'm going to praise you. You're worthy, Lord, for what all you have done. Yesterday, Lord, I may have done some things, Lord, that you, you could have sent me to hell, but you didn't, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And we're going to praise you today as our Pine Hills community team, PACC, will lead us in prayer, lead us in praise. All right? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. God is so good and Amen. his mercy endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah, Let God. us rejoice and be glad. I said, come on, somebody rejoice yeah, and yeah, be glad yeah. in it. Lord, we thank yeah. you. We yeah. honor you. Yeah. We bless you. Yeah. Song says, I will bless thee, O Lord. Yeah. I will bless thee, O Lord. Yes, Is there anybody come to bless the name of the Lord? If you come, that's right. You know what to do. Put your hands on it. Somebody say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I honor you. For the presence of the Lord is here. And Thank guess you. what? He's here Thank to give you whatever it is you Thank stand you. in the need of. Yes, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. You guys know this song. It's an oldie, but it's a good song every time you hear it. You can put your hands on it just like this with us.
Now somebody put your hands on it right there and bless him like you said that you would because he's been faithful, because he's been kind, because he keeps making ways, because he keeps opening doors, because his love never fails and his mercies are new every morning. That's why we bless him. That's why we praise him and we honor him because he's truly good. Lord, you've been better than we could even be to ourselves on your yes. best day. Yes, God yes. is still better. Yes. Even when we feel like we dotted every single I and crossed every single yes. T, God is still better. Yes. And then even on those times when we know we missed the mark, thank God that you are better and yes. your grace extends to us even when yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. we don't deserve it. Yes, even when we feel like we don't even want it, we just want to do what we want to do, his grace is sufficient. Yes. And that's why we honor him. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody just open up your mouth and say something sweet about your God. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. You've been so good, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so
good to me. Better than good to me. Been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Been better than good to me. Better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. 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 You've been better than good to me. 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 You've been better. Better than good to me. today you've been so good and maybe if you were in it he let you come out of it all right you've been so good you can just think of some things that other people are in jail for but the grace the mercy and the love God didn't let you get pulled over when your registration wasn't right maybe your insurance lapsed on your car maybe you did something that wasn't quite by the books but God kept his hand upon you and for that we give him glory and for that we love on him and for that we say you've been good oh you've been you've been so good so good you've been you've been so good To me. to me. Now, if you can just think of one time that God really made a way for you and you didn't know which way to go. Come I'm on. talking about before you felt like you had it all together. Come on, and Jesus. you was praying and crying, yes, crying and praying, and praying and begging and, and asking praying and believing God to come through. Believe. And when he showed up, showed up. that yeah. praise that you gave him, when he showed up, showed up, just in the nick of time, just before you lost your mind, just before you lost your job, just before you gave up, just when you wanted to quit, God's hand came in and strengthened you, and you gave him a praise that was undignified. You gave him a praise that wouldn't relent. You were like, I'm not going to stop praising you until you bless me. Somebody ought to open up their mouth and give God glory that he kept his hand on you. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul, somebody's soul ought to cry out.
say good morning, good morning, church. Amen. Thank you so much, brother. Those who are watching us live, thank you so much for tuning in on uh, today. I want to say thank you so much for joining us on today. And to everybody that's here in the sanctuary, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. We want to definitely say, want to um, send our condolences to uh, Sister Coltman, um, who lost her husband. Her husband has transitioned. Um, and so we want to definitely keep her in prayer. Amen. 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 And so uh, we want to say, Miss Coltman, if you're watching, if you hear us, we love you. We are here. Your church is here to support you, to comfort you, and to love on you. Information, I believe, has went out via email as it relates to um, um, the homegoing service. And I believe it's 11 o'clock on Friday. Friday. So those who can make it, let's come on and hug on, love on Sister Copeman in this hour. I heard her husband used to help out here at the church to do electrical work. Uh, and so... Um, you know, it's, it's, this is what church is about. It's about us coming together to help our church be ongoing. And we do that not only through our giving, but we also do that through our time and our talents. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we don't take it lightly. Anybody that gives, anybody that comes and helps to sustain, support the ministry, uh, we want to tell them thank you and show that we care and love uh, um, love them. So we appreciate you so, so much. You saw the announcements, um, so please make sure, put it on your calendar, whether it's sisterhood, brotherhood, um, also letting everybody know who's watching us live. We do have kids' church, so if you come inside and you just want to relax, uh, we have a place for our kids as well, Transformer Kids. And so we are working together to uh, do better with our kids' church. My prayer is that our church has the best kids' ministry there is in the nation. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm talking big talk. The stuff where we headed, the things that we wanted to do, I've come to find out sometimes for us as adults, we can handle certain things. But I do know it's two areas in the church that go lacking. One is prayer. Number two is kids' church. We think that if we just give them popcorn, that's enough. No. No. We want our kids to learn. Amen. We want our kids to get something. I know when I was at, I got one of our, uh, uh, one, uh, a friend of mine, who I'm going to let her come up here in a minute. When I was at Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Willis C. Barnes was very big on youth ministry. Our youth ministry, we had hundreds, um, hundreds of kids that came through there and are doing great things. And so, one of them is here with us today, and I want her to come up. If, if we can get a, I'm going to get this mic. Come on up here, Drea. I want Drea. Come on, y'all give it up for Drea. I know you don't know her. One of the things that I'm going to be doing um, for the rest of this year, and we're going to see how this goes, I want to honor uh, or highlight some national holidays national holidays. Drea called me right on time. And so we're going to be, if we're saying we're the community, we're Pine Hills Community Church, let's honor some things that's going on around our community. And so Drea is going to give you some information about what's going on in the foyer and um, um, with the truck out there. So go ahead, Drea. Thank you, Pastor Miles. God is good. <clears throat> all the time. God is good. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to speak to your congregation today. And as Pastor Miles mentioned, this is a really um, honor for me to be here and to see him and everything that he's doing and also um, giving honor to his first lady. Um, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. Um, so t tomorrow represents um, National Faith HIV Awareness Day. And so I am, um, I started a nonprofit organization called Let's Be Hive. And it's, it's an acronym for Let's Be HIV Educated. 
And what we do is we partner with various businesses and faith-based organizations throughout the Orlando Central Florida area, um, including Orange County, Osceola, and Seminole County. And so today is very special because I think it's a way that we can integrate the importance of education and HIV awareness through the church because we have a huge impact that we can make through our faith-based leaders and our faith partners. And so in, in honor of being here today at Pine Hills Community Church, I'm very excited about this opportunity because tomorrow we are going to be observing this, this Awareness Day. And um, it's typically observed every year on August 29th. And it's because faith plays a major role in the lives of many Americans. And this Awareness Day is intended to engage faith communities to work together to support HIV and AIDS education, prevention, treatment, and care to reduce and eliminate stigma and discrimination within their communities. And so that's exactly what we're here for today. A lot of people may not know it, and at any opportunity that I get, my mission was given to me by God. And anybody who knows me knows I'm, I'm a believer. I love God, and I'm going to do his will. But this is something that he put on my, up my life as my calling to help other faith-based leaders understand and know the importance that faith is a huge component in, in ending this, this epidemic that we have going on. And a lot of people may not realize it, but Orlando is classified, Orange County, the Orlando metropolitan area is classified as a priority jurisdiction from the government. This is from Washington, D.C. So they have a plan to end HIV, the HIV epidemic. And Orange County is the top, one of the top priorities because HIV is spreading so fast in our community. Mm. And a lot of people don't know it. Mm. It is affecting us, our community. 32808 is a prime zip code where there's a lot of high incidence that it's spreading within our black communities. And so this is what we're here for today. And so I highly, highly recommend that we have testing provided by Orange Blossom Family Health today and let's be hive in partnership with Pine Hills Community Church. And so if you don't know your status, I'd highly recommend that everyone takes advantage of getting tested today because that's the first step in prevention. Also, normalizing the conversation of HIV because if it's in our communities, it's in our churches, it's in our workplaces, it's everywhere we are, and we don't know who could be affected by it, but I do believe that with the love of God, that anything is possible. And I do believe that we are on a, a track and on a vision, or on a path to where we can really eliminate this disease. The good thing is, is we've el almost eliminated it through pregnancy, as far as transmission, um, through perinatal transmission. So if we can almost eliminate it completely in that arena, then I know that it's possible that we can eliminate this infection amongst all populations, okay? But right now, the African-American community is the most affected and the most impacted by HIV. And it's in Orlando. I, I practice at Advent Health um, at the hospital, and so I see it on both sides. And so that's really what is driving the mission behind Let's Be Hive and getting out into the community and, and speaking to the top of my lungs and doing what it is that God had called me to do, which is to speak about this and to help bring awareness so people can know about it because it is preventable. So I do, I wanna thank you. If you have any time, please make sure you stop by our tables. Please make sure that if you wanna get tested today, it's free um, by Orange Blossom Family Health Center. So if anybody is interested, has any questions, any concerns, if you have family members that need help or anyone that you know could benefit from this type of information, I think that the love from the church can actually draw people to God. And if we expressed a lot more love in this arena and showed people that we do care and even through the church, so irrespective of someone's lifestyle, God told us to love mm -hmm. everybody. Yes. And so... It's not really our place to judge their lifestyles, but I think we can be stewards of what God has called us to do and to love on everybody, no matter what, to get help people get the help that they may need. And a lot of times people do, they rely on the church in order to help them get through tough times. And so that's one of the missions that I wanted to do with Let's Be Hive is to make sure that there was a faith component 
into what we're doing in the community. So thank you so much, Pastor Miles, for giving me just a few minutes to speak today on how important this topic is. And, you know, we had a town hall meeting yesterday at uh, Smith Center. So it was really important because I feel like for our black women and our black men, we have to start talking about it and, and actually helping our children to understand the importance of this as well because they're growing up in, an, in a society where it is very challenging and it makes them vulnerable when they're trying to explore and learn how things are happening in this life. So the importance of abstinence, the importance of STI education, which stands for sexually transmitted infections. This is something we have to talk about and prepare not only our children, but even adults, our singles ministries, health ministries. And so I do believe that the church has the power to actually help heal our world. And so I'm so excited. If anybody has any questions, um, one of our mottos that we go through or what, what we say at Let's Be Hive is that together we can make a difference. And I truly believe that if everybody rallies around and if it's affecting our community, then we have to do something about it together. And together we can make a difference to eliminate this, this infection so we don't have to deal with it anymore. Through the power of God, amen. So that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. If anybody is interested in following us, we are um, at Let's Be Hive on all social media platforms. And um, if you don't feel comfortable, we also accept direct messages. That's behind the scenes. That's not as public. And believe it or not, we are helping people in Africa. <laughs> Um, we've received messages from people all around. You have no idea the need that is out there, and people don't truly understand the infection enough, and so that's, that's what we do. And so to be able to have an opportunity to offer free testing through the church and to be able to offer these resources, I'm very excited about it. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, feel free. We are here. Amen. Amen. Y'all give it up for Drea one more time. Amen. I want to say thank you so much to Drea. And, and one of the things that I'm finding out, man, is, um, and we know this. When, you, when, you're, when, you're, when any pastor is coming into this pastoral role, it's not enough for you to know the, end, um, the theology. You also need to know your community. Know who you're serving. Know what's going on in your community. And so... There is a push that if we're going to be called this name, Pine Hills Community Church, is that we continue to keep finding out what's going on out there so that we can bring some kind of ministry to this. Amen? Amen. I said amen. Amen. Because sometimes we want to hear good preaching and we want to hear good singing. But can I tell you, sometimes your preaching is not going to work. Sometimes your singing is not going to work. Sometimes it's for us to connect with other people that got the answers, that got the connections, that not only have the answers and the connections, but have, I like this, she says she has a heart. She has a passion for this. She's not doing it just to be seen, but she's seeing this every day. And so I want to say thank you so much for thinking about Pine Hills Community Church, Drea, to come by to get us some information so that we can help get that information out as well. Baby, you can get my, my, my pad. It's on the other side of here. Amen. Let's get ready for um, the word. Come on and stand to your feet. If you can, let's go real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, this is not where I wanted to start, but I'm going to actually uh, go here. Um, I want to read the whole thing, but we're not. Hallelujah. The Bible records in verse 9, I'm reading the message version. It starts off by saying, the message version starts off by saying, or to put it another way, you are God's house. You are God's house. Using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed blueprints 
Apollos is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there is only one foundation. Somebody say there's one foundation. Yeah. The one already laid is Jesus Christ. Take particular care in picking out your building materials. Eventually, there is going to be an inspection if you use cheap or inferior materials, you will be found out. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You won't get by with a thing. If your work passes inspection, fine. If it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn out and started over. But you won't be torn out. You will survive but you'll just be barely surviving. I want to talk to you today as we're dealing with um, the inner court and the outer court, the broken church, the broken church. God bless this message in Jesus' name, amen. The broken church. In this particular chapter, church, Paul is dealing with a group of people who are saved. We can tell that they're saved because Paul uses this word when he's talking to them. He uses a word and called them brethren. Brethren, good to see you, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Woodrow uh, and your wife. Um, brethren represents the mere fact that you're in the family. But the thing is, when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Look at what it says. Look at verse 1. He says, but for right now, friends, I'm completely frustrated by your unspiritual dealings with each other and with God. You're acting like infants in relation to Christ. You're capable of nothing much more than nursing at the breast, which means, watch this, you're saved, but you're acting like a baby. You're grown, but you don't got it yet. You, you, and here it is, they don't have it because they got division amongst them. Sometimes there can be envy, there can be strife. And you can tell how a person, whether who or not, tell whether a person is mature or not as to how they handle when division shows its ugly head. How are you going to handle when, watch this, something that is anti-God shows up? If it's anti-God, you come against it. You don't go with it. If it's anti-God, you go against it. You don't go with it. Here, this is a church, these are a group of people, the Bible says, that watch this, you're capable of nothing much more than nursing at the breast, which means you're a baby at this. Well then, I'll nurse you since you seem capable of anything more. As long as you grab for what makes you feel good or makes you look important, you are really much, um, watch this, you are really much different than a babe at the breast. Content only when everything is going your way. So when everything is in your favor, everything is in your corner, you are right. But when it's not going your way, you want to act a fool. You want to show out. You want to do your own thing. Now here's the good thing. Paul recognized since you're saved, that don't mean I do a, since you're saved and you're doing something that is contrary to God, I do away with you because you ain't doing it how I would do it. What he does is he takes what God has given him, but he feeds the people on a different level. Instead of giving them solid food, I'm going to give you baby food. 
Okay. Because you're not mature enough to handle the deep things where God is trying to take you. There are some people who appear or they say, I want the deeper things of God, but you don't even have, you ain't, you, you ain't even mastered this baby stuff yet. Which means you have not mastered the basics of Christianity. You have not mastered the basics of kingdom living. You, you, you still, watch this, you're saved, but you're still divisive. You're saved, but you still treat people nasty. You're saved, but you watch this, you go according to your flesh. You curse them out instead of walking away. What, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I know y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. You, and here it is, God is saying, if you're going to be broken in this season, I need you, watch this, to let me break through the areas where it's hard because I'm trying to mature you. I'm trying to mature you. So I don't care what sister did with her man and she went and slashed his tires and got spray paint and put it all on the car. We don't care about that. No, we want to do, God, what should I do when my man is acting a, a fool? What should I do when my wife is not being submissive? What, what should I do? And here it is, Paul is saying, man, y'all ain't got it yet. Y'all ain't got it yet. You, 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 you think because you grown, you got it. But your spiritual, your spiritual food has nothing to do with your age. Because I know a lot of old fools. Why y'all quiet? You gotta, if you're going to be spiritually mature, you got to want what God wants. If you're going to be spiritually impactful, you got to want what God wants. Want. Somebody say, I got to want what God wants. I got I to gotta want what God wants. I got to be hungry for what God wants for me in this season. Not just in this season, but everything that I'm attached to. God, how do you want me to operate with what I carry? With what you have given me responsibility for. And these people would try to pick sides and they trying to bring division, and, and Paul has to remind them, when one of you says, I'm on Paul's side, and another says, I'm, on, uh, I'm for Apollos, he says, aren't you being totally childish? This is the message version. He say, aren't you being totally childish? He says, verse 5, who do you think Paul is anyway? Or Apollos, for that matter. Servants, that's all we are. This is what the Bible says, message version. Both of us servants who waited on you as you gradually learned to entrust your lives to, the, to our mutual master. We are nothing but people who waited, who patiently waited for you to get yourself together. You could have, I could have left you, oh God, as a leader, I could have left you, and watch this, some people downplay leadership and they don't respect leadership because they have all kind of different views and different ways but when God has his hand of God on a leader, you best believe there's something in that leader you need. Now, I know, I know we grown. I know we grown. I know we grown. I know you grown. But there is something in a position leader that God has his hands on that you need. Whether you like it or not, some places, I like what Darius Daniel said, there are some places you're not going to get based off the mere fact you don't respect leadership. Where a leader can't talk to you in the area where you're struggling, then you won't grow in that area. Why? Because you can't let, you won't allow the anointing in your leader to touch an area. Because he's not just saying words. The power of God can come from that place. And I'm not just talking about a pastor. I'm talking about when you're functioning, when you as a leader are functioning in what God called you to do. You don't, know, you don't know how much power you, you have. You don't know how much grace is on your life to shift the thing. That when you talk, it is not just words. It is words packed with power. It is words packed with an anointing. That, and watch this. This anointing gives you such, oh my God, 
such an amazing grace that is on your life to bring change. Paul said, man, I, look, we, could, we, we, we just servants, but uh, don't, don't get it twisted. Uh, we are servants who waited on you as you gradually learned to entrust your lives to our mutual master. We each carried out our servant assignment. He says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered the plants, but God made you grow. It's not the one who plants or the one who waters who is at the center of this process, but God. God is the one that matters in this process. Let's not ever forget this. No matter how high God has taken you, it is God who got you there. It is God who is going to sustain you. I don't care how many people are applauding you. I don't care how much money is coming to, into your house. Don't you ever forget when you turn around, it is nobody but God that brought you. Y'all ain't going to help me preach this. It is nobody. Somebody say, but God. That's it. It's not the one who plants or the one who waters who is at the center of the process but God, who makes things grow. The reason why it grows, Drea, is because it's God in it. The reason why what, oh my God, the reason why where you're going, what, who you're about to help, who you're about to touch, is going to flourish and it's going to happen for you and it's going to break forth. I need somebody to get excited about this pr prophetic word that's coming up. Listen, the re when, when you start operating and saying, you know what, I want God on this, he is the one that's going to bring the increase. <sighs> Planting and watering, listen to what Paul says, are many servant jobs at minimum wages. I don't get caught up on this because this, is, this, this job right here is just the basic. It's the menial. It is, it is, it is, it's really nothing. But watch what he says next. What makes them worth doing is the God we are serving. You happen, he says, you happen to be God's field. Look at what Paul is telling the people. He said, you are a field in which we are working. Or, here it is, verse 9, to put it another way, you are God's chosen house. You're God's chosen house. Don't sleep on this. You're God's chosen house. You wear the spirit of the divine sit. Yeah. You're where the spirit of his deity, his power, sits and rests on the inside of you. You got to catch this. Because if you're God's chosen, stop worrying about who's against you. Stop worrying about who's, watch this, what's, what's not, what you feel like, what's not going to work. No, no, no. God has something special on the inside of this field. And he sent people in your life in different seasons to help work what has already been planted, what has already been made. I say, I planted, another water, and another gives increase. I planted, another water, another give increase. You are a field. God is always trying to build on what has been established. And the reason he's trying to build on what has been established is because God is at the foundation. But I got to mature you because there's levels to this. You can't be a, you can't be a seed forever. At some point, look at your neighbor and tell them you got to grow up. You can't be a seed forever. If you're going if you're going to be effective, we got to grow up. We can't do what we are used to doing. You are constantly evolving in the 
things of God. If you are 72 and you're still mean in church, come on, y'all. If you, 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 you never say hey to nobody. You never try to build a relationship with nobody. And, and we totally got this gospel all wrong. Pastor Miles, I'm coming in church and I'm gone. I don't, I don't say hey. No, no, no. This is about konania. This is about fellowship. This is about knowing who you labor with. Why? Because there are fields that are coming into our churches. And we got to know who does what so that when it's my turn to help somebody, what you ain't empowered to do, I may be empowered and y'all ain't going to help me preach. I may be empowered to do it. But if you never talk to anybody up in your church, if you never ever sit and have a discussion to pour into a younger generation that you think don't know nothing, or watch this, you're young but you never want to get advice from somebody that's been there. We can never bring the church to a place of maturity because we still acting like babes. So we have ministries in place, but we got babes in leadership. We got churches in our communities, but we got babe churches. And Paul is saying, listen, I need y'all to catch this. I need you to grow up because there's something you got to catch what God wants to do. The reason why I'm saying this, church, and I, I hope y'all catch what Pastor is saying, in order for us to be a transformational church, in order for us to be a church where we are, uh, are, 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 are impactful, I need, you to, I need you to be open up to letting the Spirit use you where you're at. Take the limits off the Holy Spirit. Do you hear me? Because God is at the foundation of you. So the Holy Spirit is coming to build upon that. Okay. Here it is. I need you to know this. I need you to write these things down. Write this down. God, I got to get three minutes. I'm looking at the time. Write this down. Natural man. The natural man. Write, write down the natural man. It is, the natural man don't know God. Okay? The natural man. Okay? That's when you wasn't saved. You didn't have God. That's your natural man. Okay? So anybody that does not have God, haven't accepted him, they operate from their natural man. So those who are saved, I need y'all to hear me, because if you're going to spiritually help somebody, you got to know, watch this, you got to know where you are and you got to be, you got to grow in a relationship with God so he can teach you something. I'm going to get into that. And you're going to know what you're dealing with. So when your response come back in a way where you're not, where you don't like it, you will know what you're dealing with. If they don't got God, they're operating from their natural man. Here it is. Number two, spiritual man. The spiritual man has God, okay? The spiritual man has God. The people that Paul is talking to, Mr. Lee, they got God. But here's another thing I'm about to give you. Carnal man. Carnal man is, I got God, but I don't, oh, oh my God. I got God, but I, I allow my flesh to be more dominant than God. A carnal man has God, but he allows his flesh to be more dominant than God. So what, watch this, those of us who are saved, what we have a problem with is our carnal man. We got God, but our flesh want to act up every now and then. Our flesh want what it wants. Your flesh ain't going nowhere. Did I say ain't? Ain't. Your flesh is not going anywhere. You are always going to be dealing with your flesh. Your flesh is going to want to cuss people. Your flesh is going to want you to fight folk. Your flesh is going to, listen, your flesh going to, look, your flesh going to want what it wants. Somebody say, the flesh going to want what it wants now. 
Okay, the flesh gonna want. I ain't trying to judge you, but your flesh gonna want what it want. Your flesh is gonna want you to, watch this, operate according to the natural man. It will always put you back to your natural man. Your, your, your carnal man, that, that which you, watch this, I got God, but, but God, at this, point, at this moment, I'm, too, I'm in it now. I'm in it now, and I can't run from it. And since I'm in it, I might as well do it. But then now at that point, you need, to, you need to tell your flesh, okay, you need to run. You need to resist the devil. Watch this. It's not so much the devil, devil. Your flesh can be the devil. Your flesh is contrary to what the spirit wants. Okay? Now, here it is. Paul is talking to these people because he wants them to grow up. In a nutshell, Paul is speaking to his brethren, which one, watch this, the theologians, once again, I want to let y'all know, these people are saved, but yet they are babes. Okay? Here it is. Among them is division, strife, and envy. Paul wants the people to know if you're going to do what God has called you to do, you got to grow up spiritually. Because, watch this, you're acting like babes, which means you're not acting as according to the spiritual representative, the representative that God wants you to um, be. He wants you to, as, watch this, when you connect with him, he wants you to grow with him. He wants you to mature in him. Why? Because all of you have gifts, and he's sending you to certain areas in different lanes. So what I want to do is I want to empower you where you're at because you're going to reach a different audience than what Pastor Miles reached. You're going to reach a different audience than what Miss Veronica reached. You're going to reach a different audience than what Reverend Christian reached. And so what I want to do is I want to build on the foundation of where you are because what I want to do is uh, help you mature because I am going to send you out one day. That's my hope, is that I send you out as a disciple and you go and impact, watch this territory, which means you are advancing the kingdom of God. You are taking God into an area that might not be there. So that strange anointing, that strange place that God had, oh my God, that God is calling you to, he's calling you that area because watch this, can't nobody do it like you do it. Why? Because you are anointed and appointed for that time but you gotta keep God at the core you gotta keep God at the core and you gotta build on this 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 you, on this. you have to build on this uh, Lord said um, um, Miles let the church know um there's a spiritual work that I would want them to do. But it's based on their repeated calibration before me. What does that mean? In other words, it's about you staying positioned. Calibration means, watch this, you got to stay in order. There's going to be time your flesh is going to want to take you out of order. But if you are going to be broken and used for God, you got to watch this, want to stay in order. You got to watch this, when your flesh want to go left, you got to say, no, nah, I got to get right back in his order. Why? Because if I go left, it'll take me out of his order. Which if it takes me out of his order, it's taking me out of his direction. If it's taking me out of his direction, it's taking me away from his righteousness. If it's taking me away from his righteousness, it's taking me away from his favor. And I don't got time to delay time because I do know that time means something to God. You can't, God, God is wanting to use you in time. He wanted you to arrive on time to help bring change to a thing. But anytime you deviate, because watch this, you're not mature, you're wasting time. Then you'll get back to watch this, looking at your life and saying, man, what have I done with my time? You never matured. You only saw the spiritual as Sunday. <laughs> Don't come to Bible study. Don't do prayer. When I come into Sunday, I use Sunday as my bed. I sleep. Yeah. 
Yeah, so here it is. God is wanting to use you just like he wants to use, watch this, tools. You are tools. Tools. You are tools. You're, you're, some of you, watch this, God is saying, man, I'm going to use you in two ways. I'm going to use this. You're going to be like the doctor and you're going to be like the thermometer. You know, thermometers, they must be made according to specification. It must be carefully checked according to certain specification. It must be carefully checked according to standard before it will give a reliable and accurate reading. So before a thermometer is used, it has to be checked before it goes out. Here it is. Church, we are the thermometer. And if we're not accurate, we only bring in confusion to people. And let me pause here by saying this because this is what I'm looking for in my time. Is there anybody like me that, watch this, you're in here, but you got such a hunger for God to hit the nail on the head concerning those who have been, watched this, marginalized, beaten with life, scorned, misused, taken for granted. Is there anybody who really, who, who says, I, 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 I want to see my loved one's lives change. I want to, and watch this, God, I want to do it from an authentic place with such, here it is, a strong accuracy that it shocked people. That when God is using you, they're going to they gonna be like, how you knew that? I haven't talked about this for years. But what you said to me, I know it had to be God. See, we didn't got so comfortable in church now, we don't believe in that kind of power. Yeah, we, 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 we don't believe in that kind of power. We just want the hoop, but we don't want the power. Again, let me remind you, church, you are the thermometer. And if you are not accurate in God using you in an area, you only will bring confusion. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Watch this. The author is one that originates or creates something. He's basically saying, I didn't create confusion. I didn't originate confusion. God is not the one who originates or creates confusion. And here it is. Unpositioned people, unpositioned workers for God birth confusion. And they confuse people. Watch this. And watch this, when you confuse people, you keep them unclear of their assignment. So since the church don't want to be a broken church, and we just want to sing but not have an anointing. We want to preach but not have an anointing. You can't give out the spirit of God because watch this, you're not clear on the inside of you. You ain't been broken, so you can't help nobody. Oh, God, y'all don't want to have no church. Y'all don't have no church. So a broken person is a person that God, watch this, has got on the inside of them and have taught them some things. You've learned some lessons in your life. So now when you say a thing, I got to get up out of here. Now, when you say a thing, watch this. It's no effect because maybe you haven't learned your lesson. Now, if you learned your lesson and God was able to teach you and he was able to break you, then he can use you. And sometimes y'all are giving, watch this, you're giving people the legal right to speak into your life, which they haven't been broken in that area. Facebook, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The reason why people stay the same is because we got people who are speaking that ain't been broken in their area. You can't help me with my marriage if your marriage on shambles. Why y'all, why y'all quiet? Okay, you can't, you can't help me get delivered from temptation if you ain't been broken in that area. You can't help me get delivered from pride or from jealousy or from anger or from bitterness or from unforgiveness if you haven't allowed God to allow the Holy Ghost 
to touch you in that area. Which means, church, we first got to get broken. I know it's hard. I know it's tight. I know we don't like it. But sometimes you got to let God deal with you first. Because watch this, what, what you're going to, what you allow is, oh God, uh, uh, Reverend Christian, give me that chair. Give me that chair. Give me that chair. Yes. Lord have mercy. Right here, right here, Reverend Christian. Where you going? Right there, right there, right there, right there. Y'all help Reverend Christian. Lord, touch his heart, Jesus. Touch his heart. Here it is. Here it is. I got to get up out of here because we, 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 we over time. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Let me sit down and talk to y'all. Okay. And let me burn my jacket because I'm getting fat. Uh, here it is. Now, this here is your outer man, okay? Somebody say, the chair is my outer man. Okay, now here it is. The outer man is stubborn, okay? The outer man don't like to listen to nobody. The outer man got his own way of doing life. Everything the outer man, when, watch this, every person the outer man come in contact with, people keep seeing the same thing. So if people see, watch this, I know, I know, uh, uh, that chair right there, he's stubborn. He, girl, he's stubborn. He was stubborn with me too. He was stubborn with you. And then another person saying he was stubborn. So they recognize that there's a spirit of stubbornness on you. It is. Now, on this side, I hope y'all remember this. When you are a natural man, you don't know God. Then you get God. You're saved. But what you wrestle with is the outer man. This is the carnality of it, but you still have the spirit, okay? The spirit is on this side. And in order to help somebody, the spirit has to break through the outer man, which means in order for the outer man, in order for the spirit to work, the Holy Spirit to work, this has to open up to go to the other side. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Which means there has to be a brokenness. You got to break the stubborn part of you. Maybe you're not stubborn, but you deal with um, uh, lesbianism. You got to let God deal in that area. Maybe you deal with lying. You got to let God deal in that area. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is on that side, on this side. Now watch this. The Holy, you are a spiritual being, so the Holy Spirit comes and breathes on your spirit. So watch this, if you was to ever to try to encourage somebody else, what's happening in the spiritual realm is this. Some of us who are not broken, we're going around. Which means you're speaking from an area where you haven't let God go through. So now when you give advice, your advice is really, it might be good advice, but it ain't God advice. Because you're not speaking from God. The, the purpose of the Holy Spirit was to connect with your spirit so that when you're being used by God, watch this, the Holy Ghost is attached to your spirit to go through what you've been dealing with to help somebody else. But if, if you are not allowing God to break through you're only giving off, you might as well just be giving off worldly wisdom. Which makes us what they call mere men. Mere men in the Bible is what they call worldly. Which means when you're speaking and you're saying you're helping somebody, you only gave them what the world could have gave them. You didn't give them what the Spirit wanted. And the Spirit cannot give what God, oh God, the Spirit can only do so much if you don't let him break through. Can I tell y'all something? Stand to your feet. Let's get out, let's get out of here. There's so much teaching in this. Because where I'm at right now, and the shift that he's taking me through is we got some spiritual work we got to do. But sometimes, mama, you know what I come to find out that I got to be careful of too? We want to help people where we need help. 
If you ain't allowing God to help you in your broken place. Now, I'm not saying you can't encourage nobody. I'm saying it's going to be hard for you to encourage people from a place God ain't worked on you yet. That's why it's important for you to know who labor amongst you. Because watch this, where, oh, Dr. Fleet, where I'm not strong in an area, I can call on Dr. Fleet and say, Dr. Fleet, I need you to pray. Because she's allowed God to break her in that area of prayer. So God uses her when she prays. Reverend Christian, I need you. I need you next week. I need you to teach. He allowed God to, to break him in an area where knowledge means something to him. We're helping somebody with God's voice and his, his wisdom and his knowledge. So Reverend Christian, I need you to teach this. I wouldn't tell Reverend Christian, hey Reverend Christian, go outside and run. Run two miles down the street. Reverend Christian's going to look at me with a face like, Pastor, you, you better shut up. You know I can't do that. That's not his area. God is saying, for a broken church, I'm looking for a broken church that's going to say, God, I want you to deal me with the, in the areas, watch this, where it's hard for me. Because God, if you can use, if you can, if you can help me become disciplined and stand broken in that area, you'll be able to use me for somebody else. That when I talk, I'm not talking from a place where I've been there. I'm talking from a place where I've been there and I got delivered from it. Y'all, 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 y'all. I'm talking, I'm talking to you from a place where. I ain't just been there. I got healing. Um, oh, God. I was healed in this. But our churches will remain with people who are unbroken because you know what? We don't never be honest. I didn't pass that test. And that's why when you look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, try to look at it. He said, man, he didn't say the worker is going to be tested. It's your workmanship is going to be tested. What you, what you put in place to help somebody, God's going to come back and test it. Watch this to see, did you build, watch this with straw, or did you build with something that can help hold them up? Because some people are making it, and they're making it unbroken. They never get delivered. They never get changed. They're still miserable. They're still depressed. You still stressed out. You still want to kill yourself. You keep going to the alcohol and you're trying to find, watch this, something to take care of the issue. And that's not going to take care of the issue. There's something more deeper. And so that's why my word is like a two inches sword. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. It cuts, oh God, it cuts deep. It goes beyond the norm and it goes to an area that can really. Bring the change. So today, God, here's my prayer. I pray for a broken church. I pray for a broken church. I pray for a church that this week is saying, God, help me in the areas where it's tough. God, help me in the areas where it's tight. Help me to get around somebody that can really bring, watch the deliverance to where I am. Help me to be around somebody that can help me see my marriage and, and, and how God want me to see it. Help me to be around somebody that can help me see my life the way you see it, God. God, I, here, here's another prayer that I want to pray over your life. Accuracy. My prayer is that you become accurate in the things of God. It ain't going to take long because you, because watch this, you allow God to use you, you allow God to download things. You, you can't miss it. You can't, 
This ain't the time to miss it. This is the time, God, I need you to use me and to be on point. I want to see the fruit of your spirit. I want to see the results of what you called me to do. I want to see, I don't want to see the results because I want to be glorified. I want to see the results, God, because when my work is finished, you have tested my work and you get the glory. God, I want you to help me to be accurate. So God, today, if there's one that's watching me, you're not saved. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I know you probably didn't mean to hear this message today. This is what, what, what you was expecting. But I came to tell you, if you give your life over to God and you become disciplined in the things of God, don't worry about trying to be the superstar in God overnight. Have a growing relationship with God. Where you say, God, I don't want to just I don't want to be no baby in this no more. I want to I want to mature. I want to be used by you. And I really want change to happen for somebody else. So help me, God, to deal with the places where I'm divided. Help me to deal with the anger. Help me to deal with the strife. Help me to deal with broken, God, bad relationships. You said in your word that bad company corrupts good character. God, it corrupts good ways. It corrupts good manners, God. God, my prayer is that my company changes because it's messing up the way I'm living. It's messing up the way I'm functioning. My prayer is that if you're not saved today, get saved. Let God work on you. If you don't have a church home, my prayer is that you uh, uh, don't go another place. Choose us today. There's many other churches that you can go to. Hey, check them out. I would just say give us one month. Repeatedly come here one month. Check out every Sunday. See how it goes. See if this is a place of fit for you. We want you to get connected. If that's you, you come on up. Hallelujah. If that's you, you come on up. If you're watching us online and you don't have a church home, you don't have to come in these doors. You can, you can join our church right there, right now. Just send your information and say, I want to get connected. I promise you we'll get back to you. We love you. God, we bless your name. If there's no one, Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Listen, we got to get up out of here. We're over time. We're over time. Y'all, excuse me. Um, um, we're getting ready to give our offering, getting ready to give. I ask today, if you're not, um, um, if you're, uh, not just giving an offering, we're asking that you tithe today. Come on, let's continue to help our ministry. All right, let's be honest with God. Um, um, he's only asking for 10%. He's only asking for 10%. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's continue to support our church. Let's keep our church going. If this word has blessed you on today, come on, sow a, a seed towards it. Amen, amen, amen. Sow a seed towards it. We are asking um, once again, um, um, church, that you check your emails this week. There will be an email going out. We're looking to have a special business meeting. I wanted to send some information out. We got some things that we got to take care of. All right, so we want to get some things done here in our church. Our ushers are coming. If you're giving via cash out, it's money sign love at PHCC. Money sign love PHCC. Once again, money sign love L O V E P H C C. You can give uh, via cash out. Also, you can give via Tithely as well. All right, and then also, if you are watching us um, or you're on conference call, you can mail in your checks. All right, mailing your checks to Pine Hills Community Church, amen, and we'll make sure that the uh, funds go where they need to go, amen, 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 amen. Everybody had a chance to give? Everybody had a chance to give? Okay, we good, we good. All right, stretch your hand toward the offering, please. Lord, we thank you for the seed that have been sown. We pray that it be used for the edifying of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet, let's get up out of here. Please remember, as you're walking out, get with Drea, get some information for the ta from the table. Um, we got some people in here, Drea, that's doing some community things, um, so, so definitely want to get connected. I know Miss Alicia, if she's here, we're going to be doing some community stuff, so I want Miss Alicia to meet, to meet you. Amen, amen. I, I definitely know Mom got some things. Mr. Woodrow probably might got some things. 
We got a lot of people got stuff going on in the community. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of our visitors. Do we have any visitors? Raise your hand if you're a visitor. We don't want to put you on the spot. Thank you so much for coming to be with us on today. You look, you a visitor? Okay, okay. Well, y'all give it up for our old friend. Amen. 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 Good to see everybody. Let's get up out of here. We're praying for our sick and shut in, our seniors. We love them. Pray for Miss Betty Tatum. Pray for the McTeer family. Pray for um um Coke Cokeman and um she's in the hospital. Her husband was just back here. Willis. Sister Willis, all of our seniors, definitely keep them in prayer. We love you, Sister Willis, all of you, uh, those who cannot be in our church. Miss Roberta, everybody. We Miss Ena, we love you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Lord, we thank you for this day. God, I pray, Father God, that this word, Father God, leave with us on today, Father God. I hope I did the best um, um, that you're pleased with, Father God, that the word may go and, 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 and God, we sit and think about. Father God, those areas we need to allow you to move in. Now, God, allow your angels to be encamped around our vehicles and our homes that we may get home safely and have a good night's rest. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wear your mask. Hug somebody on your way out. Amen. Amen.